Leslie Waters is a celebrity chef known for her appearances on programmes such as Ready Steady Cook and This Morning. And Liam Sweeney is a creative partner of the Hubbub Foundation. And they're both here with us just now. Merry Christmas. How excited are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, 11. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm a strong 7. I love Christmas, uh, but I am also a bit of a Scrooge. Mm. Oh, I don't believe. (laughs) <laughs> well, I think you've brought down the tone quite a bit. Sorry, and I'm a 10, I'm a sol- solid 10. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose we can't blame you when one of the most stressful parts of Christmas is the cooking. And quite a lot of people, it turns out, don't know how to make a Christmas dinner from scratch. So, first of all, Leslie, mm-hmm. what quick tips have you got for people that want to make a Christmas dinner from scratch? Okay, so my first tip is don't go too crazy in the supermarket. You know, mm. um, we all overbuy stuff. We all, you know, it's ridiculous. The supermarkets and the shops are shut for a, one or two days, you know. Yeah. So don't buy too much stuff because when you get home, you pack it all in the fridge and you can't see what you've got. Yeah. Okay. Number two, do as much as you can do ahead of time the day before. So you can prep all your veg, you can do all your sauces, you can even do a little backup gravy if you want to, which I'm sending the recipes for for the website. We'll talk about that later on. Um, Cranberry sauce, bread sauce, you can do pigs in blankets. You can do all of that, get all of that done so you haven't got to worry about that on the day. And on the day, get everyone to help and join in. Don't Mm. take it all on yourself, okay? Get everyone to help. When your turkey is cooked and you take it out of the oven, lift it onto a big platter, cover it with tin foil, cover it with a couple of clean tea towels and let it rest for 45 minutes while you cook your pigs in blankets, you heat up your sauces, you make your gravy and you turn the oven up for the potatoes so they go really, really nice and crisp. But get everyone on board. I think that's Mm. the thing I would say to people. Yeah, although that's an interesting point because I think a lot of people when they're cooking, they don't like people coming in and trying to to help and coming in and out of the kitchen i say you need to get over that and you <laughs> yeah, <very laughs> and cool. i'm so bossy toby at christmas yeah. i don't let anyone sit down i get them up. and also it's a way you all end up talking helping yeah. it's just a lovely way of doing christmas dinner i think mm. um but you know i was actually to be honest with you quite surprised at um you know 47 percent of people not cooking it from scratch and one of the sauces yeah. that people haven't cooked is crab which is probably the easiest yeah. to make. Do you cook, Toby? Are you? No, it's all cooked for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to be busy this Christmas. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that surprised me was pigs in blankets because, on the face of it, that looks like a really easy thing to do. But they're all easy, yeah. But you're right. Mm. I mean, uh, cranberry sauce is literally takes five minutes to cook. Yeah. Cranberry sauce literally takes four minutes to cook. Okay, Christmas pudding. Yeah, but I. Have got a lovely Christmas pudding which I'm going to put on the website which is called an instant Christmas pudding I had a lady ring me up years ago who put too much alcohol in her pudding and it went moldy wow and she rang me up on Christmas sent me an email over Christmas uh, Christmas Eve so I I sent her my instant Christmas pudding and she doesn't bother making any other pudding. She always makes the one that I sent her and it takes about an hour to cook. It's a much lighter version. Um, But I think a lot of it is, I mean, I was taught, I grew up in the 60s and my mum and my grandmother taught me how to cook Mm. um, and I learned to cook at school. But there's a few generations out there that didn't have those cooking skills passed on. And, you know, for a lot of people, Christmas dinner is probably the most important meal of the year Mm. you know um and they want it to be perfect my first thing would be to say forget perfect just get everyone involved and enjoy it and stop worrying about everything being perfect yeah you know um i think also uh i'm it's a great pleasure to be here today with liam who is one of the creative directors of hubbub um, because they put together, I don't know if you know much about this, Toby, but um, these amazing um, community fridges. There's mm. uh, 250 at the moment all over the UK. And it was, I'm going to let Liam tell you about it and how it all first started. Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it's, 
the, so community fridges are uh, communal spaces all across the UK where people can come together to eat, connect, learn new skills. Um, and they're all centered around food waste. They, they started as a food waste initiative. You know, people were sick of seeing good quality food going straight in the bin. And they were looking at what they could do to, to stop this. So uh, the birth of the community fridge started. Um, I work for Hubbub, yeah. who are an environmental charity. And we have the world's largest community fridge network. Um, and it's basically support and advice and guidance given to uh, any anyone in the community who wants to to work with other people to set one up. And they've become amazing places in at the heart of communities that brings people together, um, forming new friendships, um, teaching people how to to use food and educating around food. I mean, food has always been a way that that brings people together, but that tends to be at home in the family. So this is a really nice way that it can work in the community. Um, we've been talking about cooking and, and cooking Christmas dinners, but actually cooking skills in general can, you know, like you said, Leslie, it can be whole generations who, who, who leave home without knowing how to cook. And um, Toby, I think you've robbed yourself of one of the greatest joys, learning to cook. <laughs> it's so much. I mean, I'm, I'm making a big assumption here, but because uh, Christmas dinner, some people get very, uh, as you do, Leslie, very bossy in the kitchen uh, around how it's orchestrated. But, you know, cooking is so much fun. It's such an enjoyable way to spend time. I, personally, I don't like the midweek cook because you're tired, you've got children, you've got long days, etc. But actually, it's really nice to just try new recipes and grow in confidence. And community fridges are, are at the heart part of that they're teaching people side by side how to cook different meals yeah yeah I think that's really lovely Liam I mean you know a lot of people um I always tell this story of this guy that turned up at my cook school years ago and he looked I've never seen anyone look in such a bad mood and I opened mm. the door and he said my this is my wife's idea I can't cook mm. anyway he came in and um by the end of the day he thought he was Jamie Oliver I mean you know, <laughs> he picked up quite a lot of tips and techniques and he was so excited and it, it was just really exciting to see him become liberated in the kitchen mm -hmm. and you knew that when he left that he was going to continue and I think that's what's so brilliant about being a lot of people saying they'd like to learn to cook they really would but they don't necessarily want to be taught by a specialized chef or teacher what they mm -hmm. want to do is be taught by somebody in the community or someone they know that can pass on that information and of course that can happen at the community fridges. Absolutely. So why is it important to make a Christmas dinner from scratch instead of just buying it all pre-made? Because isn't that a lot easier? Well, I think it might be a bit easier, but it won't taste anywhere near yeah. I'm sorry. Once <laughs> you've made your own cranberry sauce, you're never going to buy it and ready mm. made. I'm sorry. Um, it's so easy to make. I mean, all you've got to do is buy some fresh cranberries, um, about 400 grams, stick them in a saucepan with a good old three, four tablespoons of of port, the juice and the zest of one large orange, and about sort of 60 grams of caster sugar. Very, very gently bring it up to the boil and then simmer for five minutes. There you go. That's your cranberry sauce. Done. Yay, Dust. fun. You know? <laughs> and it's delicious in Christmas sandwiches you know the next day when you have the mm. cold turkey the stuffing a bit yeah. of homemade cranberry sauce really lovely and the big conversation has been what is the biggest waste over christmas and nobody as liam was saying nobody wants to waste food mm. but liam what is it is it brussels sprouts yeah, that's right. Um, and it tends to be a lot of food that's just off the plate that people have eaten too much. They've put too much food on their plate. It goes straight in the bin. Oh, yeah. And food, food waste at Christmas, it's everyone just buys too much, don't we? Just in case mm. and just for extra person. But as, as you say, if you have lots of food left over, don't put it all on the plate, have it in bowls. And then what you've got left at the end of it is, is so much food that you can feed your family for three, four days. And it's delicious. And you can do so much with leftovers. There are so many recipes, um, you know, available on how to cook uh, simple leftover meals, sandwiches, bubble and squeak. And that's just, pretty, you know, it's, it's delicious. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you can always go on the internet or, or check out some of our recipes, um, but the internet will be really helpful on leftovers. Um, and my, I always think of my grandfather, Grandad Hornby. He would always, because it's Christmas pudding that seems to be left over quite a lot, because mm. generally speaking, at the end of the big meal, you really haven't got a lot of space for it. Yeah. So he used to, 
to slice it up and fry it in butter, okay, on Boxing Day. And the mm. kids would have it with ice cream and we would have it with um, all the cold cuts. And I know it sounds a little bit odd, but try it because it's like eating a hot chutney. Oh, absolutely delicious. Brussels sprouts as well. We've all come, I think, one of them. Do you like Brussels sprouts, Toby? No. Right. I'm probably <laughs> in the majority here as well. Right, okay, <laughs> so... Do me a favour this year, try them roasted. They're mm. a completely different beast. It's a game changer. Absolute <laughs> game changer. Just trim them off like you would do normally. Wash them with the water that's still attached. Put them into a roasting tin. Drizzle over some rapeseed or olive oil. Loads and loads of salt and pepper and a good old splash of balsamic vinegar and roast them in a hot oven. Mm. Depending on how big they are, you can cut them in half if they're really big. But they are absolutely delicious. Hot or cold, I hasten to add. Yeah. And how do you work out how long to cook a turkey for? Because you've got to do it by the weight, right? Yes. I mean, if you're getting your turkey from a supermarket, it will give you the instructions. But generally yeah. speaking, it's about 45 minutes per kilo so for mm. instance i've got a five kilogram turkey this year and that will take between three and a half to four hours to cook the important thing is is to make sure that the thickest part of the bird is cooked so that's where the thigh is that's the thickest part you want to make sure that all the juices that come out are clear they're not pink or bloody and mm. if you've got a thermometer you can stick that into the thickest part of the bird and it should read sort of round about 74 degrees celsius okay and that means that it's cooked through and don't forget even when you take it out and let it rest for 45 minutes which is important um it will carry on cooking a little bit as well yep and turkey dinosaurs only take about 20 minutes so you can save yourself <laughs> all that faff <laughs> Yes, but they won't taste as good. I'm sorry, Toby. <laughs> I can assure you they do. And microchips <laughs> along with that as well. Hey, I never turn down chips, Toby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best tips for roast potatoes as well. I don't oh, think we talked potatoes. about them yet. Okay. So you obviously love roast potatoes, yeah? Um, Sure. <laughs> You like Toby, you're, you're not filling you're not filling us with confidence here. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay, for roast potatoes. What you want to do is use a what I call a a good kind of type of Maris Piper potato. Mm. Cut them up equal sizes so they cook at equal times put them into water boil them bring them to the boil and cook them so that they're they are just about done and slightly slightly flaking a bit off the edge drain them shape them in a colander so you ruffle up the edges and then put them into hot i use rapeseed oil um hot rapeseed oil and season them really well and my grandmother she would always used to put a little sprinkling a couple of teaspoons of sprinkling of plain flour over the top and toss it through and put them in the oven to cook at a yeah. high temperature i mean obviously you won't be able to cook them at a high temperature unless you've got loads of ovens to start with but when mm. your turkey comes out you can then stick the temperature right up yeah absolutely and going back to the point about food waste i suppose that would have been a massive thing last year people would have done all the shopping thinking that more people would come round <laughs> for christmas and then it kind of all got cancelled yeah i mean liam you've got some figures on food waste haven't you i mean yeah it's it's um and you're absolutely right people bought quite a lot and that's where having a freezer can really come in handy because you mm. can extend the life of fruit food um you know a long way through your through the use of a freezer but um that is hard nobody wastes food on purpose yeah. um but there are things that you can do to reduce food waste as much as possible and it's it's as simple as you know knowing the food that you buy planning your meals in advance and it doesn't have to be a chore you know you can make it fun if you get your family involved um you know i think it's something like 730 pounds of food is wasted each year by the average family oh. and food food waste alone is a huge huge problem for the environment it's believe it or not if food waste was a country it would be the third biggest emitter of carbon gases uh emissions globally behind the us and china um, it contributes hugely to our environmental footprint because so many resources go into growing it, processing, packaging, storing, transporting it. So by the time it's hit 
our plate if we carelessly throw it away you know if you think of all of the <laughs> the hard work that's gone into getting it there yeah. it's um you know and and also when it's thrown in the bin it doesn't it doesn't biodegrade naturally it doesn't get the oxygen it needs to biodegrade and therefore it releases methane so actually if you if you are going to waste food put it in the composter otherwise try not to put so much on your plate plan what you're going to buy and actually just simple things like that save you a huge amount of money and you're doing your bit for the environment so it's a, it's a it's win-win yes. and remember things like christmas cake and christmas pudding which are often the things that aren't all eaten you can keep them in the fridge for a couple of months or you can stick them in the freezer for a year mm. um and bring them out you know when you're ready and you want to eat them again um don't throw them away you can you can make a delicious trifle with christmas pudding um and they do stay in the freezer for at least a year yes absolutely well where can we find out more about this then okay so um if anyone is interested in finding out more about the community fridges or any of the things we've talked about today go to co-op.co.uk well that's about all we've got time for i think before they kick me off (laughs) so have a very merry christmas you two and good luck with all your cooking oh thank you and you toby thank you toby